Hey there, I'm Volton from Volton Productions, and f welcome back to my flat world after like several months. So, in this episode of the flat world, we've got some stuff to do. As you can see in the thumbnail, it took me 300 days to finish a certain project. But you know what? We also got a lot of other stuff done on the way, and I can't wait to show you guys it all. So, let's go back to a day 167. To start off the challenge on day 167, I actually first booted up the world in vanilla Minecraft. Everything before this was all recorded on Forge. I needed to load it up in vanilla so that way I could actually repair the string duper. Specifically, duper number 9. As for some reason, when I was, after I had built it in, in episode 3, it broke. And I didn't bother fixing it then because I didn't want to have to change versions, so yeah, I waited. However, I was able to successfully fix the duper after a bit of testing. After that, I reloaded the game, but this time with fabric. Anyway, then I went down to the villager breeder and killed the final two zombie villagers. I originally intended on healing them, but decided that it, against it because I just was not rich enough at the time. I did not have good access to sugar, which I need to cure our villagers. And if I remember correctly, in my old world, it it took me at least 300 days or so to actually get sugarcane. That's just because I was lucky. Anyway, after I started going over to the alternate village to get some more villagers. But it turned nighttime, so I decided to go to sleep. On day 168, I continued sprinting out to the alternate village. I grabbed a villager and then brought him back over to my village. I did notice on the way back though that my original mending villager also got infected. But you know what, that means I don't have to do anything to, uh, you know, I don't have to build him anything, so I think that's okay. Anyway, I started moving the second villager over, but it turned night, so I hit the sack. On day 169, I finished bringing the new villager over to the breeder. Afterward, I left the two down there, grabbed some bread, and then went back down, while also fixing the rest of the damage from episode 3, and after I released them from the boats, I called them to become a farmer, and also threw a lot of bread at them. And you know what? This, this was perfect. I now had villagers. Well, again, I guess I should say. Anyway, after that, I decided to begin construction on a facade outside to try and prevent Episode 3's disaster from happening again. In this episode, specifically, we're going to be trying to focus mainly on a section E of the plants here, which is the central part of the town. And on day 70, I began... I continued outlining the facade and then actually began building up the walls. Basically, the, the old entrance, well, I guess not really old entrance, but the entrance to the villager breeder is now just going to serve as just, well, the basement. Oh yeah, I also took this screenshot to, just to really show that, uh, that I got new villagers. Continued placing blocks, and then I started putting in the floor. I was using jungle wood because at this point, that was the only other wood type I had. But trust me, I'll get another wood type in this video. Unlike last time when I got scammed by the wandering trader. <sighs> I'll never forget his betrayal. On day 171, I finally got started on building up some of the walls. Obviously it is going to follow the same general theme as my house, that being mostly made of deep slate, as that's become the general theme of, well, the city, which the true name of it, by the way, will be revealed on day 200. Anyway, I got some support beams up and some more deep slid down before I ran out, so I spent a lot of the day mining for, for, for some more. Then I did some more work on the walls before going back to bed. Day 172, I continued building up that house. I decided to use crimson fences as windows because I felt it would fit the industrial theme. Also because, canonically, and this is some uh, of Voltage Production's Flat World lore, this house is owned by Old Man Charlie. And, uh, well, he was this kind of most he could afford. Fence windows. Anyway, though, I did run out of uh, crimson wood while building, so I had to go into Never to get some more. I got a decent amount, but some, uh, some hoglins were attacking me, and also some skeletons. I decided to go back to the overworld, and good timing too, because it, it just turned night. For days 173 and 174, they were pretty much the same thing. Both of them were really just spent finishing up the walls and f finishing the roof. That's all there really is to say about these days. Also, if it seems like I'm going fast, because I am, we have a couple hundred days to go through here, and I want to try and get make this video shorter, so... Yeah. 
On day 175, I finished building the roof for Old Man Charlie's house. However, we're not done with the build just yet. We still have the interior to do. However, that'll have to wait for a little bit. After I finished the roof, I decided to go and mine more deep slate since I'd already used up a lot of it. I go through the stuff very quickly if you have not noticed. After that, I decided to tend to the crops behind my house. I wanted to get a full field of all four major crops. The next day, I went back to farming and I got all the plants redone. I had a lot of beets on me now, and beets are objectively the worst crop in the game, so I decided to just chuck them to the villagers. They hardly eat anything, so the beets were a blessing. After that, I went back inside of Old Man Charlie's house to begin actually decorating. But, uh... Well... It wouldn't really be a Voltage Productions video if I didn't die at least once, right? Yeah, nah. Yeah, I, I, I died. It was kind of embarrassing, too. Anyway, I spent the next day after that just decorating the inside of the house. It wasn't that bad. I still need more practice with making interiors, but you know what? This was fun. Day 178 started out as any capitalist day would, exploiting the week. Then after that, I went to go mine some more deep slate, because again, I could do stuff very quickly. I spent the rest of the day just mining gravel and never. I was going to be needing a good amount of it for the, uh, for the base here. Day 179 was pretty grindy. I started out by just continuing to get a lot of gravel from the never before I eventually went back and started turning all of that uh, gravel into coarse dirt. And you know what? I think Skyblock players know that all too well. I then did some renovations on my front lawn. Got some more cobblestone in there. Though I kinda ran out of cobblestone, so I ended up having to get more. For day 180, I finally started on actually decorating the central area itself. I don't really consider Old Man Charlie's house as part of it. It's just something that's just kind of there. I started out actually first by tearing out the floor. There's gonna be more of this uh, decoration later. It consisted of the coarse dirt I crafted earlier in normal dirt. Most of that also happened on day 181, but on day 181, I also decided to use some more of Mini HUD's features. One of them being render slime chunks. I was expecting exactly zero to pop up since zero slimes had been spawning, but when I turned it on, I was surprised. There were slime chunks everywhere, which means that it's looking likely that my world did generate with slimes, but I'm just too high up to actually see any of them. Honestly, I think that's a good thing. I hate slimes. Then on day 182, I popped into the never because I was going to be needing some quartz for a thing I was going to be building in the central part of the town. I'm not really sure how much quartz I needed, but I, I, I got a lot, so... I grabbed a little bit more quartz on day 183 before I left to go back to the overworld to start building a thing in the central area. I started placing down some deep slate and some quartz blocks. You may notice that I'm making a message here. What do you think I might be building? If you said making a monument for day 200, then you are correct. I didn't make a monument for day 100, which might have been more special, but that was because I wasn't keeping track of the day counter then. But I am now. And no, I want to do something cool for day 200 to make up for the lack of something on day 100. So yeah, day 200 monument. I think that's probably cool enough. On day 184, I continued building up the day 200 monument. I'm gonna need to get this done early because I need to breed up those sheep, which I end up doing later. You may notice that I'm building up this big stick here. Don't worry, there's gonna be a decoration at the top. We're, you're gonna have to wait for day 200. Anyway, after that, I started working on a facade for the crop farm behind my house. It's using a lot of deep slate too, so... Yeah, maybe I should not use my uh, fortune pickaxe so much, it's going through a lot. One if I start off with a little bit of capitalism, just a bit. If anyone went back to working on a facade, I'm mainly just trying to get a feel for it. And by that, I mean I'm just trying to get the general idea of what I want it to look like. Then later on, while I was doing things, I noticed we got a visit from the Wandering Trader. I was hoping he would have a new wood type. Initially, my eyes only went to the jungle wood, but then I saw it. Mangrove property. My favorite wood type. We finally have another wood. This is perfect. I love this stuff. I might use it in some more builds in the future. Day 186 was mainly focused on capitalism. 
I mainly just uh, sold stuff to the villagers and also finally got a new villager to sell me glass. All my old ones are dead by now. I also started leveling up a new cleric, so that's always nice. Also, why can't I make green die by combining blue and yellow? Why, Mojang? Why? Day 187 was pretty much just focused on continuing building the facade, but I will note this. At the end of the day, I renovated the entrance to the Deep Slate Mine. But you may notice that, uh, well, I kind of blocked out the water. But I didn't notice this at the time, because I'm stupid. And, uh, this'll, uh, this'll come back to bite me. So yeah, it did come back to bite me. Literally the next day. I needed more Deep Slate, so I decided to head back down to the Deep Slate Mine. But again, I didn't notice that the water stream had vanished because of my stupidity. As a result of this, when I went down to enter the mine, I noticed that I wasn't being picked up by the water. And as such, I hit the ground. And yeah, that kinda... that was kinda terrifying for a little bit. But I was able to find some water regardless, and I was able to get back down. Then I did the deep slate mining. On days 189 and 190, I continued building up the building around the farms in my backyard. You know what? I decided first on focusing on getting the simple wall pattern in before doing all the nice details. And also all the glass. The glass will be expensive. It's very valuable and super flat. And day 190, I continued doing the same thing, but then I had to do a lot of deep slate mining. Hi, so it's Editing Bolton here. And, uh, days 190 to days 220, roughly around there, or I guess it takes me 191 to 220. Those days, from 191 to 220, those days are not really recorded. And the reason why I'm saying this is because, well, uh, you see, <laughs> essentially, fairly recently, I moved to a new computer. And pretty much everything you've just seen was edited and recorded on the old one. I moved it over to this computer, but a lot of the files are still on my old computer, and I'm going to be honest... I really can't be bothered to transport those because I don't have any hard drives. So I can't move, move all those files over to a new computer. And you know what? I mean, I can through Google Drive, but it's a pain in the ass. So we're not doing that. I also forgot to press record on a couple of days. So that means even more days that have gone unrecorded. It's a bit embarrassing, but whatever. I'll just describe what really happened during those days. I believe from 191 to day 200, I was probably just working on things you've already seen. And by that, I mean probably just a facade for the plant farm behind my house. And then, day 200 came. And I've, I'm just going to reveal the name of the base now. The true name of my Minecraft Superfly base is the Republic of Industria. Formed out of the remnants of northern France and western Germany in the lowland countries, a thousand years later, Industria is a powerhouse in Europe. And it's a very capitalistic state. And one was prominent too. And this is the flag that I threw together really poorly. You know, maybe I should hold a flag contest. Yeah, you know, maybe I should. I don't know, we'll talk about that later. Anyway, after that, I'm pretty sure. I remember vividly trying to go out to some coordinates to see if there would be a stronghold there, but uh, no, there wasn't. When I started recording uh, the video again, I wasn't really sure what to do since the base plans were still on my old computer at the time, so I decided to just work on other stuff, like increasing the size of that decoration from earlier, and also building up the facade. It was around this time though that uh, I started actually properly recording again, and it started working on the base blends again. Anyway, back to reality day 220-ish. Don't worry, a proper in-game day counter will return soon. J -j just bear with me here. So today, I start off with a little bit of capitalism. I can now use the industrial flag and not the American flag. The next day, I went back into the string factory to do a little bit of renovating. There's this area where I collect all the string that I left looking pretty ugly for some reason. And you know what? I think it's now time I actually make it look good. So that's what I'm focusing on. We're gonna make it look good. Something I also noticed is that it seems that after I moved my world to my new computer, 
all the villagers trades reset meaning any trade that i had maxed out at that point now no longer mattered since i was now on a new computer i'm not sure why that messed it up but it did and uh that's why you always look through the footage everyone because apparently this is day 205 and i did record it huh well at least now I know what day this was. Anyway, day 205, I had a little bit of a panic, I'm not gonna lie. Turns out, a pillager party spawned in my storage. I thought, hmm, wait. Maybe I could get a raid going and finally get a Totem of Undying. No, no, that's not happening. Yeah, no, dude, that's not, that's not happening, dude. The one with the banner despawned somehow. I don't know where he went. Anyway, I woke up on day 206, and I finished destroying the rest of the village. It was something I had been wanting to do at this point because, well, pretty much all these buildings are in the way of my future industrial city, so at this point, they kind of needed to go. And you know what? It's definitely making the area look a lot different from how it looked at the end of episode 3. I also began building a new storage because my old one was just too small. And you know what? This one's a lot more compact, so it's better. Day 207, I went to Endeavor to get some more shroom lights, as I wanted them to be at the back of the wall in the new storage. I was able to get them after being attacked by a lot of pigs, and then at the end of the day, I was able to get some of the items into the new storage as well. There is no day 208, just day 209. I, you know what, now that I think about it, I probably just, it's probably also just now part of day 207, but whatever. Actually, the main reason I noticed it's day 209 was because I had F3 open. Anyway, for what I did today, I actually just prettied up the uh, basement area, just getting rid of all the torches, and also replanted some crops. Day 210, I ran down to the villager area to grindstone my armor as I wanted to get better enchantments on it. As I was leaving, I noticed that the wandering trader had finally spawned again, so I quickly ran into the strength factory to grab more strength to trade. And then uh, I saw his selection. I feel insulted. This is terrible. Anyway, I did buy some dripstone sometimes he had before, just trying to get some good armor. And you know what, I just kind of gave up and decided that it was good enough. So, I'm, I decided I would just lump roughly days 211 to uh, day 214 together into one section because, I'm gonna be honest, it's kind of a pain in the ass trying to tell time with these recordings. And besides, they can all be summed up into basically the same thing anyway, so... Essentially what happened throughout all these days was I was just ancient debris mining because I decided that I would use the 8 diamonds I had to duplicate my neverite template so I could turn my diamond sword into neverite. The mining was pretty uneventful, in fact I forgot to press record for the next 14 days so that means days uh, 215 to 227 I believe are pretty much all lost to time. That's rough. Anyway, what I think happened in those days was me just building up the frames for Argentine Tower because I decided that I wanted to finally finish that. But I figured that the best way to make the farm functional was to dig out the area of air all the way down to uh, the deep slate layers. Because there was no way in hell I was going to be mining up that much deep slate by hand. I already do that day every day. It seems off camera I already got some progress, so today was just kind of more digging. But you know what, it's fine, I'll probably need these blocks eventually. Day 229, I just kept digging out the hole where the iron farm was gonna go. I've honestly kind of just reached a point in recording this video where I just don't really want to follow the 100 days format anymore because that's kind of all I've been doing recently. So I think I'm just gonna narrate this like a normal video. So yeah, for a while, what I really did with just a little bit of capitalism on the side, probably, was literally just dig out that hole. Like... It's a big hole, it goes down to the deep slate layers. You may be thinking that's Y0, but no, my world generated weirdly. So no, it's actually like Y negative 4, 5. But yeah, once the hole was dug out, I was able to finally begin making a proper iron farm. I decided to just try winging a design since I knew how these farms worked anyways. And yeah, I got something working. So, that's actually... It's actually kind of weird, that's the first time I've ever designed a farm that actually works. After getting the farm actually working, I decided that at that point, I just wanted to actually start making the tower look good. Because at that point, it was still just a bunch of dirt frames that, that I had erected days earlier. So yeah, I started off with a bit of deep slay and mangrove, and that looked pretty good. Hey, at some point in episode 3, I said this. You know, at least I made something significant. You know, whatever, it's probably, I'll, I'll probably live stream building in this world. 
just so that way you guys actually feel like a connection of sorts. I had a lot of fun live streaming previously, so I think live streaming again would also be really fun. I didn't end up actually live streaming any of episode 3, but I actually live streamed a, a fair bit of episode 4. And this was also the first time I had streamed in months, so yeah, I wanted to try live streaming again. And you know what? We actually pretty much finished the iron farm decoration. Though later I did change out some of the blocks used for mangrove because it looked too gray in my opinion. But you know what? This also means now that Argentine Tower is now finally pretty much complete. I'm probably going to add a second layer to the farm itself down in that pit just because it's a bit slow right now. But you know what? It's actually somewhat done. Alright, anyway, after all that was done, I quickly popped down to Never to grab some more bone blocks that I could turn into bone meal. Now, what I need bone meal for, you ask? Trees, of course. I don't have an oak tree farm. I should really build one. I'm pretty sure it's on my building plans, too. We were, oh, we also started finally decorating this top area, but we're not really going to be finishing this until, like, the end of the video, so... I mean, I guess it's good to get a start, right? Oh, look, I'm back in Never. I wonder what for. Short answer, Never right. But wait, don't you need a Never right to play Bolton? We're playing in 1.20. Yeah, you're right. I generate this from 1.20. So why am I getting Neverite if I only have one more template and don't want to waste it? Well, uh... The reason is because, aside of that, I would grab all my Neverite in 1.20, go back to the overworld, then downgrade to 1.19, and then apply Neverite to everything. I consider that my best option. Because I don't have very good access to raw diamonds in this world because of the way I generated. And you know what? Honestly, I wish I could say I was sorry, but I'm not. Anyway, I quickly downgraded to 1.19 so that way I could actually upgrade my armor properly to Neverite. Of course, I did a l just a little bit of capitalism. You know, just a bit. And then I started on a new project with the String Factory. What I wanted to do was hook up the String Factory to the breeder. I already, I already moved String myself over to the breeder anyway, so doing something automatic would be even better. So yeah, that's what I did. I ended up using actually most of my iron reserves just to craft all the hoppers I needed. It's just a long tunnel that goes from the uh, from the factory all the way over to the breeder. But uh, it was actually broken for a while and I didn't notice it for the longest time. Hey, you know how we were live streaming earlier? Well guess what? I was live again. This time I wanted to grind to day 300. Thing is, uh, things kind of started a bit rocky, but we'll get to that. I died and sheared a bunch of sheep, so that way I could get enough wool to make an Ohio State flag to attach to a flagpole. Why? Because I'm from Ohio. You know, Ohio State represent. Anyway, as we were decorating that sky bedroom, uh, guess what? My internet decided to crash. I tried salvaging the stream, but in the end it just didn't work. So I had to end up just stopping the first stream and make start number one and I decided to call that part two. Anyway, the technical issues were resolved and we ended up streaming for another two and a half hours. Anyway, we ended up basically just finishing decorating that area and you know, I'm very happy with how it turned out. It's very cozy. Anyway, I also decided that we needed to change the way I got down to the deep state mines as one of the problems I was having was that, see, I always had to find a little air pocket, but you know what? I don't need that. I can just get a water elevator set up. So yeah, that's what we did. We got a water elevator going inside the 200 day monument. So now I can go up and down into deep side mines very quickly and I won't drown. Anyway, at this point, I wasn't really sure what to do. I decided that some old, some old, some old capitalism couldn't hurt, right? Well, it turns out that system I had just implemented with all the hoppers at the string factory, it doesn't work. And that's because of redstone torches. I didn't know those blocked hoppers. Well, now I do know. I was able to get it fixed, but now that area is dark, I'm gonna have to find a solution for it the next time I play on this world. Anyway, we still had a lot of time left, even after trading all, those, uh, all that string over. So I thought, what can we do? And I didn't realize something. Well, I thought, when I was trading, I noticed that the stonemason we had down there was selling dripstone. And I thought, I was pointing dripstone. I'm a wandering trader. Can I make a dripstone farm? Yep, totally can. Using the little time we had left, we carved out a small room in the basement, and we built ourselves technically two dripstone farms down there. They're not that efficient, but I don't desperately need dripstone, so it's not a big problem, thankfully. We were able to get the room decorated too, and you know what? I think we do need to get some more farms in this build. I think 
We're gonna have to say that for episode 6, though, not episode 5. Episode 5 is gonna be something else, we'll talk about that later. Anyway, after all this was done, I tried to never to start mining a lot of quartz for the Day 300 monument. I wanted this monument to be nice looking, and also somewhat special and unique. I decided that I wanted to use quartz bricks and... and a site for it? And a site because, first of all, it's not something you can commonly get on Superfly, you have to craft it using, I believe, uh... I think it's like diorite and cobblestone or something? In diorite, you have to craft using, I, I believe, cobblestone and quartz. I don't know, I'll put the crack recipes for all that on screen. We were able to get the polished into site crafted after that. And we also crafted the 300 out of the spare emerald box I had in my storage. Because I thought, you know what, may as well use them. I also included water in the design because, at the time, I had actually recently gotten back from my trip to Washington, D.C. And something I noticed and was also explained to our tour group is that a lot of the memorials and monuments included water, representing, like, purity and, and and all that and i thought you know what that's cool i should also include water in this monument so yeah the day 300 monument also include water i wanted there to be cake on it too to make it more special so that's why i leveled up a ton of farmer villagers but none of them sold me cake i was a bit pissed and we were running out of time so yeah that was a uh, that was a bit rough anyway i gave up on getting cake and decided to just leave the monument as it is in this screenshot here this was taken on day 300, by the way. Anyway, I didn't really know what else to do, so I decided to just do some extra Neverite mining. And maybe this is... This is kind of poetic, I'm thinking about now, but, uh... I died on day 299 from a bed explosion. I forgot to put a block in front of me. That's a bit embarrassing. But anyway, after nearly three hours of streaming, we were finally at the end of day 299, and once I woke up from the bed, it would be the final day of the video. <laughs> uh, hello, Flat Pixel. Welcome back. Yes, thank you. We are two ninety nine and three hundred. Let's go. We did it. Three hundred. Let's go. We did it. And there you have it. We've uh, we've done it. We've officially made it to day 300, and that's the video over. I went over to day 300 monument and just uh, well celebrate at the moment, fix up the last minute dividends, and uh, yeah, that was it. I can't wait for what's around the corner. But wait, what is around the corner? Let's talk about that. I didn't show this earlier, but here is the current base plans. As you can see, Argentine Tower is 95% complete now. The additional 5% is the second layer to the actual farm itself. But you also may notice that we added something new. That something new is this. Start Strider Hub in the Never. We're starting on this in episode 5 because I realized that Never travel is going to be really important for finding stuff like diamonds. And you know what? Me being a greedy capitalist, I need diamonds. So yeah, we need to get them. But the only way we can do that in Super Flat is through structures. And my best option is never fortresses because I don't have access to the end currently. So you know what? We're gonna build a Strider Hub next time. You know what? It gives me an excuse to continue building in the Never because I really need to get used to it again. I'm definitely not having flashbacks from episode two. Anyway, that's the general plans for what we're gonna be doing next time. So, until next time, this is Voltson from Voltage Productions, signing off. <laughs>